All right, so we are in the book of Revelations, chapter 7. And we have went through the first six seals, the opening of the first six seals. And this chapter, chapter 7, is between the opening of the sixth seal and the opening of the seventh seal. So there, it kind of takes, bless you, it kind of takes a somewhat of a pause on the seals. Um, and you'll, you'll see why in, in just a minute. So let's read uh, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So uh, when it says after these things, talking about after the opening of the six seals, is John said that he saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So we know that the angels at the four corners of the earth was encompassing the, the whole earth. And it said that they were standing there holding the winds back. So these four angels were standing there awaiting the orders from God. Now when you think about, we, we've talked about angels and some have seen angels, some have felt angels, some have heard angels. Um, there's, there's many different uh, ways to witness angels, which is a whole nother teaching in itself. But these angels were awaiting the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were holding the wind. They were holding everything back in their hands. Now, it goes on to verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Now, this other another angel ascending from the east... Um, it probably, it could have been an archangel, but it could have been Jesus Christ himself. Um, but it said that this, this angel, it says, having the seal of the living God, he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Verse 3, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Anybody know who the sealed servants of God are? Anybody have a guess? These sealed servants. No, the, the sealed servants of the God. Uh, sealed servants. The, the, the sealed servants of the Lord is the 144,000 Jewish witnesses. It's 12,000 from every tribe of Judah. Now, it's important to, to know here that these 144,000 Jews, the reason they had to be sealed was because if they had not um, accepted, if they had accepted Jesus before the rapture of the church, they wouldn't be on the earth. So they were part of, a, of the group of people that denied Jesus originally. So now there is 144,000 Jewish witnesses that have a seal that God's saying I, they've got to be sealed. They've got to have, um, they've got to be known. Now it says here, that we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. You got to make sure, because we know these are translations. It says in their foreheads, not on their foreheads. So, in some way, some some shape, some form, some fashion, these hundred and forty-four thousand will be known on the earth at this time as somebody who stands for Christ. How we don't know, but it said they that the servants of God in their foreheads. And it says in verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, Jehovah's Witness believe that the 144,000 is the only people 
Yes. And that's what I was just about to say. That's contrary to what we're about to read. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of their uh, the more traditional Jewish people, more strict. Um, and then they have something called Talmud, which is mm -hmm. the rabbinical debates back and forth that they have from these men who dedicate their whole lives to study trying to figure out exactly what it all means. If you read through the Talmud, um, it says that when the four winds east to blow, that's when the earth's going to end. And I find it so interesting that so long ago, even before John had that revelation, before any of the prophets wrote their stuff, even if they did, they weren't even reading it. They talked about revelation. That's what we're reading right now. They yeah. wrote that after reading or studying the Genesis, first. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. That was it. That's all the All of the Deuteronomy, and they predicted the, the yeah. sign of the horn. Yeah, the, uh, the four winds stopped blowing. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's amazing. I have heard that too about the 144,000 that some teachings or some doctrines believe that there will only be 144,000 Jewish people saved. I don't, there, there's, there's a lot of holes in that theory. Um, we'll see why in just a minute. Um, yes. Yes. Um, I can't remember which of the prophet books, but there's a story where God comes down to the city. Um, he has his scribe with him. He has his angels. He has his scribe go out and mark his people, and then he sends forth the angel of death. And do you know what I'm talking about? No. No. Where um, the the people are in the temple, they're worshiping other gods, the sun, the moon. I'll look it up. Yeah, later. yeah. yeah. Find, find that and let me know. Okay. Um, it says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Judah, uh, of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000. Of the tribe of, I uh, hope I'm pronouncing this right, Nephilim, uh, 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. What's interesting here is the original 12 is not mentioned. Does anybody know which which two tribes are not mentioned? <clears throat> you got two that's not mentioned here. They're they're actually being replaced. Um, one is the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Dan is omitted. Who? No, Judah was the first one. The tribe of Dan, we know, was not um, was not listed here because um, Dan was. Let me find the scripture that says that that it is. Genesis 49 and 17. It says, Dan will be a serpent in the way, a venomous viper by the path that bites the horse's heels so that his rider falls backward. So this particular tribe, this Dan, uh, he's evil. Okay, so we see here that the tribe of Levi is mentioned. The tribe of Levi was not part of the original because Levites did not possess land. Yes. But now they're listed here. And if you, the other tribe that was not listed was Ephraim. We know that that Joseph, who were his two sons? Manasseh and Ephraim. So here it listed Manasseh, but it inserted Joseph in here. So really Joseph replaced Ephraim. So really Dan was the only one that was left out. The tribe of Levi was put in. 
So of each one of those, it is 144,000. Now, for these 144,000, um, we've got to think, God has never been without a witness on the earth of Him. And if all of the church is raptured, who's left? Somebody. Somebody <laughs> has to... Um, there's got to be some kind of witness. Remember, we said that the, the tribulation is broken up in three and a half years. It's called the tribulation. And the last three and a half years is called the great tribulation. We know that in the first three and a half years, it's going to be bad, but it's not going to be as bad as the great tribulation because that's when God's wrath gets poured out. Um, so we know that in the first three and a half years, these 144,000 Jews are going to be sealed because they're going to believe um, that, that, you know what? Somebody had it right. I missed it. Jesus was King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is. He's, uh, and, and we missed it. So there's going to be 144. We read it, the 12,000 of each one of the, of the tribes of Israel. Um, imagine, who do you think of automatically when you think of someone who has led thousands upon thousands to Christ. Who do you think of? Billy Graham. Billy Graham. <laughs> Billy Graham. Um, so imagine 144,000 Billy Grahams in the world at that time. I mean, you know, it's, it, at that time, it's going to be hard and it's going to be difficult. Remember, I cannot stress enough, don't play with fate. Don't tempt. Make it right now. Go up with the church. <laughs> don't hang around for, you know, just don't push your luck. But 144,000 just goes to show you the overextending grace and mercy of God. He's, he's given chance after chance after chance after chance, and He's even going to extend um, even another chance through these 144,000 Jews. All right, so we, we read how each tribe is going to have uh, 12,000. 12, so let's read verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. Brother Ray, this, in my mind, this negates what the the teaching of only 144,000 are going to be in um, heaven. Because it says, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. We remember what palms mean? Victory. So even though <laughs> these are a great but multitude, these 144,000 are going to go through the land. Remember, this is going to be during the, the rise of Antichrist and how things are going to be famine, earthquakes, all these different things. They're going to, the 144,000 is sealed in order to reach this great multitude. This great multitude here, it says without number, no man could number. Well, if no man could number it, what happens to the 144,000? It negates that number. That's in addition to... Um, so... And, no, I won't say that. Um, <laughs> next time you get a knock at the door, show them that scripture. Explain that one to me. Um, no, don't do that. That'd be ugly. Don't do that. Um, I'm just playing. So, <laughs> uh, do it in love. Do it in love, but show them that because that's truth. That's the written word of God. Um, so it says that they had palms in their in their hands. It's the symbol of victory. 
um, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worship God. Do you know that's what we're going to be doing in heaven? 24-7 is worshiping God. Just, just understanding. See, in our physical, carnal minds, we only know that much of His goodness. When we um, get into the throne room, now the, the, the beautiful thing about this is when Jesus died on the cross, it said that He ripped the veil. The veil was torn. So that now we have the, the ability, we don't, we don't have to go to someone to ask for forgiveness. We go straight to the source. I mean, you can walk into the throne room of God because of what Jesus did on the cross. And just knowing that, that... Um, that song that Charity Gale sings, um, I can't think of the name of it, but she says, I was such a wretch. When you think of, of, of what Jesus actually saved you from, and I don't think any of us will really understand that until we meet him. Right. And it's... This is what I, I love about it. I think you said this a month or so ago. It's going to be forever. Yeah, eternity. forever. We only think of eternity, our lifespan. Yeah, so, so maybe 70, 80 years. Um, you hear um, Charles Stanley just passed away, and he was 90 years old. Um, and, you know, when you think of that, that that is even at 90. You think, God, you know, he had a long, full life. But eternity... Nine years is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no end. There's no. Um, does anyone ever? Because it's your mind plays tricks on you, especially when we set the clock back and up and all of, down and around. When you see that it's starting, the sun is starting to go down. You you start to come in. Well, it's time for bed. It's winding, the day's winding down. You know, there's not going to be any darkness in heaven. There's not even going to be any, any um, darkness, no time or anything. So it's going to be like it is, uh, I imagine, at noontime, 24-7. Although it's not going to be 24-7 because there's no span of time in heaven. It's going to be like that all the time. That's something... Um, <laughs> yeah. I was just say Sunday night, um, when I got in my car, I honestly had no idea it was after nine o'clock. I mean, I, when we were done, I wasn't ready to be done. I was like, well, I should go. It's all yeah. right with me. And then I was like, wow, I had no idea. Three, over three hours. Yeah. 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 When, we leave, when we leave church, uh, it is every time. We're exhausted. Yeah. But you know, when we get home and we try to lay down, we're like, <laughs> so yeah it's um it's <laughs> definitely when when you are when you're operating as god leads and you're literally I, and i hate using this term but you are literally a puppet he is moving through you and you're just going with the motions. Okay, God, I'm over here. Now I'm over here. And I, I'm praying for this one. And that. And you know, when when that's why when they said Taylor fell over with Brother Harry, and I'm like, when did that happen? I didn't even see that happen because sometimes you were just not fully aware. Um, but that's a good thing. Because if you can your mind can get in your own way. When you start questioning, and see, none of the, the reason I'm saying all this too, none of this questioning is even going to be in heaven. 
because you're going to know. There, there's not going to be any need um, for, uh, for speaking in tongues because you're going to be at the very source of, of who works through you. I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's something that our minds, we talk about it, people paint pictures of it, they, they try to explain it um, with words, but even John's glimpse of it, nothing will ever come close to experiencing it for yourself. When we are, um, you know, all standing, sitting, kneeling, face down, however it is that we're going to be around the throne room of God, we're not going to worry about time. We're not going to worry about who's there and who's not, who's watching us, um, how are the animals doing at the house. Um, I, I got to worry about them animals. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what's going on at work this week? Because you know what? That you're going to literally have everything that you need in your glorious body. There's, it's, it's going to, yeah, you, you will finally reach the perfection of God. No, we, we don't even come close to it. Even on our best day, the Bible says it's this filthy rag. There, there's nothing in the flesh that's good. There's just not. That's why we need God every day. Um, but, you know, these people that were, they're, they're around the throne. They're, they're saying in verse 12, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And we know that amen means so be it. When I looked that up and I saw that it means so be it, that makes perfect sense <laughs> that when, when we're preaching or somebody's up there preaching, we say, Amen. You're actually saying, so be it. <laughs> You're agreeing with it. That's You're, what it's done. It's, it's done. done. It's, yeah, it's, it's complete. It's, uh, I agree with that. It, it's it's going to have. It is happening. It's finished. It's done. It is that confirmation, and these people, um, it's as they were all around the throne room, and they were, what were they doing? They were worshiping and blessing the name of the Lord. Now, if anybody ever thinks that they're going to be doing something other than worship in heaven, they're going to be sadly mistaken. Because that, that's why I say people that don't, they say that they know the Lord, but they won't even don't uh, not donate. They won't even give of themselves their time to their Creator. What do you think that heaven's going to be like? They're going to be in for a rude awakening. That that is the Bible says it's our reasonable service. He's just asking for a little bit right now. Because when we get to heaven, he's going to have all of our time. Because time is not, it, it's going to cease to exist. Um, it says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came thou? Now, this one of these elders, now remember we talked about the 24 elders being representative of the church itself. I was asking John, Who are these people? Do you think that that this elder was asking because he didn't know? He knew. You, did you ever ask your um, your kids, grandkids, or somebody when you already knew the answer? You were just wanting to see what their answer would be or their response or if they'll tell you the truth or, you know. Um, and, of course, John said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve Him day and night 
in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. If for no other reason, if somebody were to read verse 17, that here we're going to be, and just like it was in the front part of Revelations, Jesus is going to be right in the midst. He's going to feed us. He's going to... Uh, it said no no one is going to hunger. No one's going to thirst. No one um, needs any heat or light. Those that are hot-natured, you know, won't be hot anymore. Those that are cold-natured won't be cold anymore. I, I, you know, no hot flashes. I, I... I told him, I said, I believe that heaven, um, in my mind, because that, that's how I am, it, in heaven it's going to be a cool 62, 63 degrees. There's not going to be any sweats. There's not going to be any hot flashes or anything else. The, there's going to be no need for heat or air conditioning because it's going to be perfect. <laughs> Get a rope. Um, yes. That I take that as these are the people who after the rapture of the church they they either they they saw that their loved ones were gone or they heard the the witness of the 144,000 and they converted. So it's all of those that after the church was was um carried away, I think called away is is what the Bible says, caught up that uh these are the people who converted, who did not bow to the Antichrist. They did not bow, um, did not take the mark, did not do any of that. And because they didn't, they were actually martyred because they were refusing. Um, think about what Antichrist means. Anti means against. So these people who were not for the Antichrist, were anti-Antichrist. Um, <laughs> so these, these people were martyred because of their faith. That's why um, even in this, God's grace extended because, remember, he said, not all of them have made it. Just, just rest a little while. Because he already knew. He already knows what the, the that's why he sealed the 144,000. He knew there's got to be witnesses for him on the earth. You want to make sure you get it right. Yeah, I, I don't. I, that's I, playing what, my, my, my experience is if, it, if I was to wait when he came back for the church and that pilot that was saved, he left his body and that plane hit, it would hit me. <laughs> and I wouldn't have that same chance. You know, I always think, you know, the torture and the things that they're going to be going I would, through. Uh, you know, you're going to be sitting there watching. They're going to, they can kill your child. you got to watch them kill your child if you don't do what they want you to do. You don't want to hurt the same part. You know, there's going to be all kinds of stuff like that. You don't want to be killed. Right? Are you going to have to really stir them at the room? Because, I, I mean, I fully believe that's why I make it to bed during times of time. Well, if you if you think about it, that the only reason that certain things have not happened is because the church is still here. You've got people that are praying, and and that that and the fact that the will of God is going to be carried out regardless. So it's not going to happen too soon. It's not going to happen too late. But after the catching away of the church, that does not mean that the Holy Spirit. Because remember. 
if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. What draws you? That Holy Spirit. So even the church is not here, but the Holy Spirit still has to be here in some, some degree because that's what changes your heart. That's what... Exactly. Anybody that can never remember when you got saved, that conviction, that just kind of, that's the Holy Spirit saying, that you, you, you need to get it right with the Lord. Um, and so in order, that's, that's my thinking. Uh, yeah, uh, some may call it um, for different reasons. Last call. I don't want to wait around. Last call. I want the early access pass. Yeah, make my reservations. Yeah, I, I don't want to just. Uh, I, I don't want to slide in. I, I want to make sure my reservation is confirmed. I'm good to go. And it's for those when they got off the ship and you had to get on the little boat to take you over. If there was only so many times that they ran, so if you wanted to make sure that you made that boat, you paid for the fast pass. Yeah. So got my fast pass. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So before we um, dismiss, we're going to take prayer requests. Let me stop this.